name is Jimmy. Today I'm going to explain to you the basics of high-speed photography. So what I have here is a flash portion of a little circuit you can put together. Documentation should be posted along with this video. Essentially we just took a disposable camera, modified it so that we can control the high voltage source on the inside from the little circuit here. It has an SCR, a drive transistor, and right now it's just hooked to a little push button, but later I'm going to show you how to trigger that with sound. So let's take a look at how this actually works. So this is the basic circuit right here, minus the event trigger sources such as the sound sensors. Uh, just powered by a standard 9 volt battery. You have an SCR, a MOSFET transistor. Right now I'm substituting a push button for the event trigger. And a little cable coming from the SCR, it actually goes to this hot shoe adapter here. Uh, this is used so that you can actually attach an, a professional flash as well. But for now I've actually modified the PC cord adapter from a uh, camera meant for certain types of flashes to work with a disposable camera that you can pick up for dirt cheap or many of the photo development places will have used ones of these floating in a bin. Just get a used one if you can, if not they're pretty cheap now. Okay let's take a look at what's going on in the actual circuit now. So when power comes in from the 9 volt here it goes first to this transistor, this little 2N7000 MOSFET. This MOSFET has its gate pin actually pulled down to ground with a 4.7K ohm resistor. This is just to prevent leakage current from turning it on on accident. Its gate is currently being fed by this push button, trans push button device, which is actually being used just in lieu of the sound sensor we'll implement later. Have a 9 volts feeding in here, and then when this activates, this transistor turns on, and it turns on the, so the SCR, which will allow the 400 or so volts from the capacitor to flow through and out the flash as such. Now the key to high speed photography on the cheap is to use a good uh, flash. Now the disposable camera flash is a great improvisation if you don't have any other options. And the reason why this actually works so well is because most cameras that you find that are still cameras do not have a fast enough shutter response time. The only ones that are fast enough for really high speed events are some Casios on the market that are going to run you about a thousand dollars. The Canon and Nikons actually don't make it, so the only real practical method is to leave the shutter open and actually expose the image with a high-speed flash that's synchronized to the event. So this flash will actually go off when the, some event is tr uh, detected. For example, the sound of a balloon popping or feeding into a microphone may set it off, or you may use a laser tripwire or a contact plate or a couple of aluminum foil sheets if you want to try and catch a bullet in flight. Now this flash wouldn't be good for something like a bullet in flight, but it's the same concept. Let's actually, I'm actually going to turn on the high speed camera and we're going to see exactly how this tube discharges. Now one thing you may notice is that on that high speed video footage, there was only a couple frames where the flash was visible. It wasn't very slow motion at all. Well, that's actually still really is a high speed camera. What it is is that the flash is actually extremely fast. To us it looks like it's something that is there for a tangible amount of time. It's the same reason that when we look at things we think they're hanging in the air longer when they jump or fall than they really are. That flash was only at an, a significant output before cool down for two frames. And two frames at a thousand frames per second is only two milliseconds that it was actually putting out a significant amount of light. In two milliseconds for a lot of high speed events is a relatively long time and that's why flashes inside of disposable cameras are actually not ideal. However, two milliseconds is plenty for most of the things that people want to try with something on this kind of budget level such as balloons popping, things being shot through the air, and it's quite interesting to see how time really can affect things with such a simple little device.